What's up everybody, I am Ghost Boy Colby, and uh, I realized that in the intro of the last Final Fantasy episode, I forgot to say Colby and I just said Ghost Boy, so uh, I feel like that's going to happen every now and then from time to time. Uh, I don't know, It if it happens, I'll try to catch myself and then correct it, but you know, uh, stuff happens. I mean, Ghost Boy, Ghost Boy Colby, it's, it's basically the same name, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Right now I'm waiting for the Final Fantasy 1, the first episode, to upload. And I figured that while I'm doing that, I might as well do a game not on my Xbox that so that I won't have to take internet or Wi-Fi bandwidth, whatever, trying to stream from my Xbox on my laptop to be able to make the video. And with Final Fantasy, I don't need internet to play the game. Um, so if that's basically what I'm doing is playing the game, waiting for that video to upload. Uh, it probably won't even finish uploading until after I'm already done making the video, but we'll see. It doesn't really matter. But, uh, yeah, in the last episode, we, uh, rescued Princess Sarah from Garland. And as a token of his gratitude, the king, Sarah's father, had a bridge constructed connecting the two continents because he heard news that we wanted to travel to the continent to the north. And uh, to fulfill this prophecy of collecting the four shards and saving the world, we need to be able to go to the continent to our north. So that's what we're going to venture towards doing. Um, there are going to be some slightly stronger enemies up north, but hopefully we will make enough gold to buy better equipment so that we're ready for them. Um, oh, I haven't uh, recovered MP. Yeah, I think I'm going to heal myself before I go. I, I don't know if it's... Like, I could probably make it without healing, but I'm just going to be safe. I mean, that's basically the best thing to do in an RPG is, even if you don't think you'll die, unless you're, like, an ep expert, I would recommend going back and healing, just so you don't risk it. Um, if you save, you know, rather frequently, then it's not as bad, but if you don't remember the last time you saved, then you want to be healing and keeping yourself alive. Because uh, whenever you die, you go back to your save point. I don't know if, you know, I don't know how many people are very uh, experienced or inexperienced with RPGs, especially of this particular nature. But, uh, and I'm no expert myself, but I'll try to explain everything I can. I think we're good. Uh, we healed up. We've got the best equipment possible for this stage of the game. So, nothing to do but to just continue. And then I don't think there's anything else to do in the castle. Uh, we'll be back there eventually, but not yet. <laughs> Obviously, because we are moving on. This is a goblin guard. It's a variation of the standard goblin. It's not a whole lot stronger, but it it is a little bit. Um, let's see. Up here, up towards this direct, you know, to the north, is uh, oh, these are the gigas gigas worms I was talking about in the last episode. They have more health than anim enemies we've faced before, I believe, and they're a little bit stronger too. So. If you face these and you're not quite at this level, they can be pretty dangerous. If you're like a level 3 or so. But they're not too bad, considering we're, what, level 5 now? Maybe level 6. But uh, the direction I'm heading right now is towards the cave of this witch named Matoya. And uh, she will... Her, it's hard to describe her importance because she's kind of important, but she kind of isn't. I'll get into it more later. Um, honestly, the inclusion of her character kind of confuses me. Not gonna lie. Now, 
then uh, these ogres uh, in combination with the gigas worms they can be pretty uh, I guess irritating might be a good word to describe it see right now they weren't that hard to take care of but if you come across a lot of them and in uh, like in combination with the gigas worms they can be I mean they're strong you know they're really strong so uh, okay so we've come across Matoya and apparently she's just bumped into something because we hear a thump and she says ouch there's Matoya right there my eye my eye Presumably, she's bumping into the chair. I can't see a blasted thing without my crystal eye. Hmm. Who could have stolen it from me? Okay, so it seems like we might have a bit of a uh, side quest to recover her crystal eye. So she's missing an eye. She has a crystal eye, like magic eye replacement but it's been stolen and without it she can hardly see well might not even be able to see at all i don't know maybe the other eye may still be in her head but does her no good i i don't know but yeah i, I like i said i'm trying to keep spoilers out no matter which game i play uh but sometimes that's easier for some games than other games so I'll mention it when the time is right but for right now all I can really say is the importance of her characters is, is just not easy <laughs> to wrap my head around I think there's really only one little section where she's of any importance and it just, it makes me wonder why they even put her in the game. But, I don't know. And then I'm gonna heal up my guys a little bit here. Uh, they're losing more health than I would like them to. I wouldn't say they're exactly near death, but I'm just staying on the safe side. Uh, we should be... Gosh. These battles are getting irritating. Uh, notice the warg, warg wolf right there uh, in red. It's, you know, basically the leader of the pack. It's stronger than the rest of them. So we want to take care of it as quickly as possible. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to heal Anne. Yeah, these, these enemies towards the northeast are giving me some trouble just because you know the further you go the stronger they get um the other guys are fine but i did want to heal Anne because she's the healer and if she's dead we don't have any way to recover health oh preemptive strikes and ambushes i didn't explain this before but basically all those dictate is who gets to go first for an entire turn so if we get a preemptive strike that means we get an entire free turn where the enemy can't retaliate and we can spend that turn however we like we don't have to attack we can use items or magic we can try to run away we can do whatever change our equipment you know it, it doesn't there's no certain requirement for what you have to do in a in a preemptive strike turn but if we get ambushed then that means the enemy got a preemptive strike and so that means they get to attack us completely free of charge we don't get to hit them back but if it's just a regular battle and nobody got a preemptive strike or an ambush or whatever that means that it's just regular turn-based combat and it's kind of decided by dice roll so to speak i mean there's there are certain stats that make you more likely to get a hit before the enemies or before another character in your party or whatever but to a certain degree it's also up to a, a roll of the dice 
not physically speaking, just like behind the scenes with like the programming of the characters and whatnot. I believe that's how it works at least. But now we are here in Provoka. Uh, it's a little port town to the northeast of Cornelia and to the southeast of Matoya's cave. And so right now I'm going around trying to find the inn. I believe it's actually at the back of the town. I don't know why I turned. It's just kind of my instinct to go to the left here. Um, notice these pirates here. We're gonna... Uh, we'll find out more about them in a little bit. Uh, basically the gist of it is we're gonna need to save Provoka from these overtaking pirates. And it will actually be easier than you might think. It's, you could consider, consider it a bit of a mini boss battle, but we do need to do it and I'll let you know why when we get to it. So now we've healed up. Uh, I do want to check out, I don't think I'm going to have enough money to get everything I want to get. Uh, that's the item shop. Here's the armor shop. Um... Oh, okay. Looks like the only things I can get are the leather gloves, and every single character can wear those. So let's just get four of those for 200 gil. Gold, gil. If I ever switch back and forth between the words gold and gil, it's just because they're the same concept. It's just a currency that we use to buy our stuff. So... And I did mention before that Duncan our monk will get to a certain point where he's better barehanded and with as minimal like armor as possible we're not at that point yet and like i said it probably won't be until he's at least level 20 i want to say maybe around level 25 is when he starts to get to that point but for now it's just best to give him the best weapons possible which we'll see you know it'll give you the little green arrow pointing upwards to show that it's better than what he currently has. So we just need to stick to that for now. Um, speaking of which, let's see. I can get a scimitar for Kellen or Lazarin. I don't remember which is which. I'm probably going to mix up their names every now and then. Because... Uh, let's see. Oh, Kellen. Yeah. Because I kind of use them interchangeably. I see them both as sort of avatars for my own personality, you might say. I don't know. Um, blinds all foes with darkness. Okay, so basically that, that lowers their accuracy and indirectly, you could say, raises our evasion. It makes us harder to hit. Um, now what that means is that it depends, like, it makes each individual hit less likely to hit. So, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but whenever we're battling, there's a certain number that says however many hits we get on the enemy and however many hits they get on us. And whether or not those hits actually land is decided by a dice roll. And our accuracy stat impacts that dice roll makes us more or less likely to succeed and with darkness cast on either an enemy or on us uh let's see oh i'm actually i think i might be off here well they're related okay so slow and dark both make it less likely that we will get hit uh in different ways so with slow, it's not necessarily that each individual hit is less likely to land, but it makes it so that they will hit us less times than they normally would have. It's hard to explain this without repeating myself. Um, but that's, that's pretty much the gist of it is we will take less damage. That's what you need to know. How that happens is, you know... Uh, temper, that will be good to have during boss battles because it will raise our attack. And 
Just like with Protect, I'll have to cast it one by one, but keep in mind that these spells, I think, should stack. So we won't lose the effects. Like if we cast Temper on one ally and then cast Protect on another, they will have both uh, Protect and Temper instead of like replacing one effect with the other. And then I think we can cast multiple protects on one ally and multiple tempers on one ally and they will still stack on top of each other. Like increasing the benefits of each uh, spell. So uh, let's talk to some of the NPCs around here real quick. And see, try to see what's up with these pirates. Uh, normally they're... I thought normally there were people over on this side, but oh well. Uh, those blasted pirates, they're running around looting and pillaging like they own the place. Uh-huh. So they're doing what pirates do. Please help us. Okay, so they need rescuing from these pirates that have basically just barged in and said that this is their place now. That seems just about like a pirate now, doesn't it? Makes sense. I can't find any other NPCs. I thought there were more, but oh well. And uh, this is Bicky, I think is how you pronounce That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Bicky. You've got cannonballs of steel to be taken on the great pirate Bicky. Keel haul him, boys. Aye, aye, Cap'n. We'll make their bones go crunch. That's my pirate voice. Uh, so yeah, this is a bit of a mini boss battle, like I said before. Um, I really wish I could target all of them with just one spell, but oh well. We'll take care of them. It's just gonna be a little slower than I'd like it to be. These guys are actually really easy to deal with, and as you can see, even my mage, my white mage, and, you know, got them with one hit, so. They're not that not that bad at all. Um, I shouldn't have used my fire spell with Lazarin though because that didn't do very much damage at all. But oh well. I guess Anne just got lucky with that first hit, hit though because... Oh. Well apparently I just need to be using my melee weapons and not my spells. Wish I'd have known that from the start but oh well. Okay, there we go, much better. I think right now, Lazarin is actually doing the most damage. Interesting. Uh, we got 90 experience, 360 gil, and everybody leveled up. Very good. Aha! I be most sorry, young masters. I'll be making no more fuss, I swear. I want ye to take my ship for your troubles. Can ye find it in your heart to forgive an old captain? We obtain a, sh a ship, and that's why we need to do that battle with the pirates, because we get a ship, and we need that ship to go where we need to go. And then if we talk to him again, he says, I've had myself a change of heart. I plan to buckle down and be the hardest worker in town. You believe me, don't you? So yeah, we needed to do that. And uh, let me just check how much gold we have. 817, that's not too bad. Um, Yeah, I'll buy some potions. Let's get like, I would get 10. Uh, I think I'll just go with five for now. Ether, I want uh, at least one of those. And then let's just get one of these other status cures. And then I want to get to a point where I can get Phoenix Downs, but we're not exactly there yet. I don't think we're too far off, but we're not there yet. I do want to find the white magic shop. Because I only saw the black magic shop. Oh, white magic's up here. 
Okay, so there's Blindna, which cures darkness if darkness happens to get cast onto us. Uh, Silence, which prevents us from casting, or prevents their foes from casting spells. I've never really used that, but I mean, I can see how it would be useful in a couple boss battles. It's not exactly useful throughout all of the game. Reduces lightning damage by half. That's very specific, and I don't think I've ever used that. So, I I want to get silence and in, invisible, or invis, but we don't really have the money for that. Uh, I might get invis, and then give it to Anne. I pretty much want to keep la uh, keep Lazarin strictly black magic. Uh, I want him to use black magic and physical uh, battling, like melee weapons. I fled here from Melmond, a, a town far to the west. It is a truly pitiable sight. The earth rots and monsters attack in the night. Is there nothing you can do to help? Ah, oh, Melmond. Okay, so keep that name in mind. We will be there eventually. I don't remember exactly when, but we'll get there. And then, let me see. I think I need to heal. Yeah, that's best. I don't remember really where we go from here. Um... I'll have to check the map. Uh, I haven't done that yet, by the way. I haven't opened the map yet. So I'll have to show y'all how that looks. And uh, exactly how you do that. So, but the thing about the map is that you can't open it. Oh, you actually can open it in a town. I thought you couldn't. I think in Final Fantasy 2, you have to be on the overworld, like the, you know, outside of a town before you can open the map. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's different from game to game. But I think we're going to need to go down here, down to this town. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing else we need to do in Provoca, so we just need to be making our way. And uh, it'll give me a chance to show you guys the ship. So here it is. And uh, while we're sailing around, we can come across uh, aquatic enemies. So that's why I picked up Thunder in the first episode. And we got ambush, but it's not that bad because we can take this guy. So I'll show y'all the extent of the power of thunder against aquatic enemies. Did 32 damage. Um, not as strong as I would have wished. But oh well. Uh, maybe some of that has to do with the fact that Lazarin isn't exactly the highest of levels right now. Could be. I don't know. Uh, we can only dock the ship at these ports right here outlined that you can see we can only park our ship there I say park dock park. It's the same concept <clears throat> Eventually, I'm just gonna start running from battles because I don't want to waste the time But for now I need the experience because early game leveling is very difficult. And you can get extremely unlucky and just come across enemies that you are not prepared to fight. I think once I get to the next town, I'm actually going to save and end the episode. And here we are. It is Elfheim. So, um, this is a village filled with elves. And let me talk to one of them here. I just don't know what we can do. Please help our prince. 
So apparently there's something wrong with the prints. I don't know what. I am a sage. When the time is right, the future is revealed to me. I shall wait patiently until then. Okay. Weapons and armor made of myth mithril are sturdy and powerful. You should give them a try. You'd be surprised. Huh, mithril. Okay, so that's going to be a common material in Final Fantasy games. And it's pretty strong. It's not the strongest, but it is stronger than standard stuff. If the prince does not awaken, there will be no elf king, and we will be at the mercy of the dark elf's evil power. Hmm. Dark elf. Huh. In a journey I once took to the west, I wandered into an ancient castle. Not a soul could be found inside, and the pl whole place gave me the creeps. So I got out as fast as I could. Okay, so to the west of here, there's an empty castle. We might try and find that place and see what that's all about um i do want to go here and show you this you see a gravestone you see a gravestone here lies link that is the main protagonist of the legend of zelda and it it's just a little uh, easter egg it doesn't confirm that you know uh, the Legend of Zelda and Final Fantasy take place in the same universe because that's not true from what I know. Uh, they're made by two different companies. It's just, I think it was just put in because of the link with, er, I say link, I mean connection with Nintendo. So, but yeah, it is cool. It's a cool little Easter egg. And you might have noticed that little graphical glitch that popped up at the bottom of the screen whenever one of the di dialogue boxes opened. That happens from time to time. It's not game breaking though. Uh, it's just because of the way I'm playing it. Uh, it did happen when I was playing this game on my own. That's how I know that it's not game breaking. So don't worry about it. I am a sage, blah, blah, blah. Okay, heard that one before. Our prince was meant to become the elf king, but what will happen now? Huh. Okay, so... I think I've talked to everybody here. Um, and in that case, since I've done just about everything there is to do without going on to the next main, like, quest, I'm gonna pause it here. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's see, now we are level seven, cool, cool, um, basically what happened in this episode is we just journeyed from Cornelia to Provoca, and then once we got the ship, we made our way south across the sea to Elfheim where next time we're gonna find the elf prince and figure out what's happening uh maybe try and find that castle that that guy mentioned figure out what's wrong who what the dark elf has to do with it who the dark elf is uh we'll figure all that out next time so until then peace <laughs>